Hey guys, the recent Q&A has shed some light on what to expect from BFA and onwards. A lot of questions were covered, so in order to save you time, I've picked out the main ones that are going to have the most impact in the game. The addition of Allied Races provides great new customization options, however with each race added, the pool of racial abilities to balance becomes larger. Does the team consider this a possible issue going forward? They answered that they tried to pull back a little on the raw power levels of these ratios that had peaked in MOP. Overall, the power level of the ratios, while they might make a small difference, are now much less likely to be a deciding factor. They also said that they don't want to hold back from providing new, unique, flavorful abilities just out of concern for balance issues. Now, this could be a little concerning. We can infer from Ion's explanation that Blizzard's current direction is a clear throwback to the old times, prioritizing uniqueness and flavor over actual balance issues. This could potentially mean that there is very likely some classes that will outperform others in terms of pure DPS, healing, or damage mitigation. However, Blizzard's intention seems to be to make up for these deficiencies or weaknesses by letting these other classes bring their own special tools to the table. However, this seems to me to be a very fine line to try to balance on. In vanilla, every class was very unique with a ton of class-specific abilities, but there were clearly some classes that were outperforming others. Class balance overall was really, really bad. It remains to be seen just how much Blizzard wants to prioritize class uniqueness over role performance. Hopefully, they will be able to get it just right. Uh, how will the world PvP work? You said that people across all servers will be separated between PvE and PvP status, but will all PvP players from every server be on the same instance, or will it be separated as it is now? Their answer was that there will still be shards, as they won't be able to fit all the PvP players on one server, but there will be more of an aim towards faction balance on the PvP shards. Or in other words, shard balance. The RP servers will be the exception to this, as they will continue to follow the existing rules and there is no involuntary sharding. If you turn on PvP on an RP server, you will still stay on the same server. Hence, there will be two types of servers, Normal PvE and PvP, and RP PvE and PvP. World PvP will most probably see a revival. Firstly, sharding will cause many PvP players to be stuck in the same area. With faction balancing, every other player you see will be a potential target. In other words, 50% of everyone in a zone will be attackable. Secondly, these players are all keen on smashing it out. They all flag for a reason, to prioritize killing a player over doing quests. So there most probably will be battles, big ones and long drawn out ones. Do Warfronts take some elements from Warcraft RTS uh, like building units and being able to use them. They answered that Warfronts were heavily inspired from Warcraft 2 and Warcraft 3 RTS elements. But no, it will not be a top-down RTS experience where you get to control different units. It will be an RPG RTS experience. Imagine an RTS where you get to control your specific hero or unit. Units will follow you into battle to do different objectives and you will be the one leading them. This sounds great as it's an improvement from the very passive gameplay style of garrisons and class order halls. Nevertheless, it also clearly means that all these AFK type missions will be coming in BFA. The pattern has also shown that these missions are very lucrative sources of gold, easy to get without having to lift a finger. If you've ever wondered how some people make millions of gold, this is one of the strategies. If you've never experienced it before and would like it, it just takes a bit of starting work. Level up as many characters as you can to max level. Complete their mission campaigns. For BFA, it's going to be to complete your war campaigns and get that AFK gold cranking out. So, if you want free WoW subscription for the rest of your life, get cracking at leveling all your alts to 110 right now. The next two sections relate to one another, so we'll go through them together. In the dev water cooler, it was mentioned that you want to return a lot of class and spec specific benefits and abilities, a la CC availability and the like. How will this be balanced in order to avoid class stacking? Blizzard wants to aim towards having to bring a specific class or classes who bring something different to the party composition. 
there should be compelling reasons to bring a class that your party or raid does not have. The most successful raids should have people who have as many different tools as possible. Too much homogenization causes only one class to have the best homogenized ability. For example, if all classes have an AoE stun, there will only be one class that does it the best. Hence, there is no reason to pick the others. Gameplay dynamics and mechanics should change based on your party's class composition. In the water cooler, you mentioned class utility and identity. Then talk about specs, main role, strength, and weakness. Will BFA have more class-wide utility? Yes. In the past, they focused too much on spec identity at the expense of class identity. Where possible, there should be class-wide strengths. Hybrids are the tricky ones as they don't want class utility to hinder the role functionality, DPS, healing, or tanking of other players. Instead, they will focus more on tools like mobility, crowd control, unique abilities like death grip, spell steal, and so on. In other words, if they carry this out to the letter, there is going to be a demand for every single class. Being short of a class will deprive that group of that class's unique abilities negating any potential strategies that could be carried out to help further the raid's progress. So, based on supply and demand, this could potentially result in there being a very high demand for the least played classes. For example, Warlocks are not usually the most popular classes, with mages being much more regular. If you are a Warlock, then you have a good chance of being highly valued, or in other words, first picked, due to the unique abilities you can bring to the table as compared to being a mage where you might not get picked due to there being several others already in the raid. This was specifically mentioned by Ion in a similar example of a group already having 3 hunters. In BFA, should this situation arise, he would like the behaviour of the group leader to be to choose another DPS other than a hunter to add to the group. This is a good thing for several reasons. 1. Such a design philosophy sustains variety, regardless of how strong or weak a class is in the current meta. For example, currently every DPS is being judged by how big of a number they can churn out, nothing else. If your class is weak in this regard, you may get glossed over often by party leaders. However, if every class brings something unique to the table, there would still be room for your class within any group regardless of how it might be performing in the current patch. For example, if you play a warrior and your class is performing 5% less than everybody else, there is still reason and value in choosing you because you can bring battle shouts to the table. Second, this is going to give you the freedom to level any class that you have always wanted to level without having to ask yourself the question of whether your class is going to be valued in dungeons or raids at the current patch. If they deliver on this, every single class should have inherent value, with more than enough reason to be chosen, regardless of skill level or how it's currently performing on sims. The downside to this, of course, is that certain classes have always been more popular than others, whether due to law, aesthetic or gameplay reasons. If you are playing a popular class right now, you may not get much priority in being picked. But if you have always had the urge to try out or switch to another class, this would be a great time to do it. Airlight races just came out, leveling changes are in, and you are in the perfect spot just before the release of an expansion to level all those alts you always wanted to level but never had the time to. If you are in a raiding guild, now also would be the great time to start planning ahead of who would like to main in which class. With the switch of emphasis on class identity rather than spec identity, it may not be optimal, for example, to have 4 druids in a small raid, even though one is Guardian, Pharaoh, Balance, and Resto. In BFA, it will become more beneficial, as far as possible, to bring a different class for every role. Is the removal of Blink-type movement talents from Shaman and Druid on early BFA data mining one of the results of the focus on class uniqueness you mentioned in your blog post, or just an isolated pruning? Blink is a core mage functionality, and Blizzard wants it to primarily be the domain of the mage. Druids, on the other hand, are much more about speed, and both Druids and Shamans are about transformations. They recognize that it's not fun to lose such a potent and core ability, but this is not enough, and they want to scale back certain things to make way for others. 
In other words, they want to double down on homogenized and copied abilities and enhance the strengths of your class. The important takeaway from this is that for future game design, Blizzard is going back to the roots of a class. If you want to be an in-your-face brawler, choose a warrior. If you want to be a versatile shapeshifter, choose a druid. If you want to be a pure caster, choose a mage. If you want to be a ranged weapon class, choose a hunter. And so on. If so, if you're making the choice of what to main in Legion, go back to the original class fantasy of each class in order to make your decision. Future class design will be based on that. And that's a wrap. I hope that through this you were able to gain some insight into the direction of WoW in the future and beyond. Hopefully, it has steered you to make a better decision on how you might choose to approach the game in preparation for BFA. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in Azeroth.